So it's not very often I talk about the launches I do and the membership side of things I do, but you've heard me talk a lot about passive income lately. And well, frankly, one of the best ways to generate passive income is to create an online course. A couple weeks ago, I did one of two big sales that I do. We did our anniversary sale for Location Rebel Academy. And well, we made over $60,000. It was one of the biggest sales I've ever had. But while it went really well, and some things worked really well, it wasn't perfect. So in this video, I'm gonna share the five things that I've learned from this most recent launch that you can apply to your next launch, whether it's your very first one or your 50th one. But before we do that, I'm someplace kinda cool right now. So let's go take a look around a little bit, shall we? Oh, and it's windy, so. Hopefully this works okay. Have you figured out where I am yet? Let me give you a, a little clue. That, that's the tallest mountain in Oregon. Welcome to Mount Hood in Timberline Lodge. Ever seen the movie The Shining? Yeah, that was, that was this. That's where I'm staying tonight because frankly, I just needed to get away for a little while. Okay, the first thing I learned in this particular launch that kind of confirmed the way I've thought all along is that authenticity and accessibility trumps automation. What do I mean by that? So often people are trying to automate their sales funnels. They're trying to automate their sequence. They're trying to truly generate passive income where they don't have to do anything. People go through the sequence, you make money. That's great. I've got my welcome sequence that does that, but it doesn't work anywhere close to as well as creating a sequence where you're actively seeking interaction and feedback. In every single email I sent, I would say things like, tell me what you're struggling with. Tell me what your goals are. Tell me what your perfect day looks like. Tell me what you're thinking about doing and I can help point you in the right direction. Ask me questions. Whatever it was, I was encouraging interaction and it got to the point where I interacted personally via email with over 250 people during this launch. That type of one-on-one -on -one interaction makes people, one, feel special because you are special. Two, it makes it easier to make the sale, frankly. And three, it makes it much more helpful and effective for me to help you with your particular goals after I make the sale and after you join. So automation's great, but it cannot replace accessibility and being authentic and actually creating those real relationships. Okay, seriously, I don't know about you, but for me, Getting out to a place like this in the middle of the current climate, one of the best things I could possibly do. Yeah, for one second, one second, I thought about, you know, climbing farther up there. And then I realized that, oh no, that seems like a terrible idea right now. I'm way too out of shape for that. Time to go find a cocktail. The second thing I learned during this launch is that six days is too long. I used to do two days, then I did three days, then I tried five days. This time I did six. And there were two days in there where I felt like I was just emailing once or twice too many times. There weren't many sales. People are going to buy in the beginning and they're gonna buy in the end. And so you don't wanna draw it on and annoy the people that don't wanna buy any more than you need to. Uh, so I think that like that three to five day range is the perfect amount of time to do a launch. Three to five days is great because let's say the beginning doesn't go quite as well as you hope it's going to, then it still gives you time to adjust. 48 hours wasn't enough. If I had a bad first day, I didn't really have time to recover. But at four or five days, you've got a little bit of wiggle room in there to try something else, throw in an extra bonus, send an extra email. But with six days, then it just draws off too long. You lose some of your momentum. And frankly, some people just get annoyed. All right, it's a little bright, it's a little windy. And I feel like the whole reason for coming out here was to get away from technology. So we will continue this in another place. And we're back home. Uh, I was only gone for like 24 hours and frankly, I wanted to get away from technology and work. So after I shot some of that stuff, I said, you know what? We'll just do the rest of this at home where it's actually less windy. All right, the third takeaway I had from this particular launch is just a solid reminder that the real work doesn't begin until the launch is over. Great. 
I made a bunch of money, but there are a ton of scam artists out there that that's everything. They make money, they're really good at selling and marketing, and then when it comes to helping the people that bought the product, they're gone. They're hanging out on a beach in Thailand somewhere. The thing that I'm reminded of, and I haven't necessarily always been the best about this in the past, is once people join, you have an obligation to do everything you can to help those people. You know, the brand that I have put out is that I'm a real person that wants to help. So it's really important to me to make sure that I'm providing even more help for the people that join when they need it most. So one of the things I experimented with is when people join and they filled out their introduction, rather than just sending them, you know, kind of a stock res welcome response, I actually record them a personalized audio note. There's a Chrome extension called Audio Notes. Uh, audio N-O-T dot E-S. So all I do is up in my toolbar, I hit a button, says start recording, countdown, three, two, one, I record the note, and then it automatically copies the link to my clipboard. So I just have to copy it into the email and away you go. So what this allows me to do is do something more personal because I'm actually talking directly to the person that joined. I'm able to answer more of their questions and give more personalized feedback than I could just an email and basically serve as a reminder that I'm still here. I am a real person and all of this stuff that I did in the marketing saying, I'm here to help you and provide accountability and guide you along the way is for real and that I'm still doing this. Um, so many people that sell information products just don't do that. Sometimes they have a support team that helps, but very rarely do you see the founder actually getting in there and doing the work. And I think that's one of the things that sets Location Rebel Academy apart. And it's something that's really important to me is to make sure that after the sale is done, we're still doing the work to help the people that bought our product, that joined our community and put their faith in us to help them with their goals. I don't actually have anything I wanna shoot right now. I just wanted to get this shot up on top of this big rock here. Okay, fourth thing, unsubscribes are inevitable and they're a blessing. When you're just getting started with a launch and maybe you don't have a huge email list, every single time somebody unsubscribes, you, it, you can kind of take it personally. It's like, oh my gosh, they don't like my stuff. What's going on? Is it, am I not putting out good enough information? No, an unsubscribe is one of the best things you can do because it's someone voluntarily saying, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm not going to buy this product. You don't wanna waste people's time. You're not gonna convince someone that doesn't want to be convinced to buy your product or that the stuff you're teaching is the right stuff for them. So, I mean, we probably got 30 to 50 unsubscribes with every single email we sent, and we sent over a dozen emails. So we probably had, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of five, 600 people unsubscribe over the course of, you know, the launch week. And that's great. I don't wanna waste their time. And I also don't want to pay for people that are never gonna buy a product. It can be difficult not to take it as someone saying, I don't like you. But really what they're saying is, you're not right for me for my goals. So try not to take that personally. It's a good thing when they unsubscribe. And this leads us to our fifth point. You have to find the balance between selling and helping. Email is such a powerful thing. I mean, the vast majority of my business has been built through the emails that I sent. But as I mentioned, we sent close to 15 emails over the course of this launch window. That felt like a lot. And what you need to learn how to do is make sure that you're still being educational, you're being entertaining, you're providing value while also selling. Because if you don't sell anything, you don't have a business and you're putting all this time and effort into something that it won't be sustainable. If you don't make money from it eventually, then you're probably gonna quit and have to do something that will allow you to support yourself. But at the same time, you can't just always be selling. You have to build trust. You have to build rapport with the people that are on your list. They have to you know, trust that you have their best interests at heart. And finding that balance between selling, helping, educating, it can be really difficult. So this is something I've been thinking a lot about. I felt like we sent too many emails with this particular launch, but at the same time, I feel like I don't send emails often enough during the course of the year when we're outside of the sale window. I'll send a link to a blog post, you know, once or twice a week or a YouTube video once or twice a week, but very rarely do I actually sell. I spend too much time helping and the business hurts because of that. So one of the things I learned is I need to figure out how to find a better balance between helping, educating, selling, and providing the people that want extra help with opportunities to get it, and the other people that maybe it's not a good fit for them or they can't afford it, to still try and provide value and help them with their goals. So before I end this video, I just wanna take two more minutes and just do kind of some rapid fire, helpful tips for you if you're doing one of your first launches. One, your email list is incredibly important. Gotta build an email list. Two, 
you have to build trust on your email list. Even though I'm talking about how you have to sell eventually if you want it to be sustainable, you don't wanna be selling so hard right off the bat that people are tuned off and they don't trust you. So gotta have an email list. You have to build trust with your email list before you sell, but you also have to cultivate a list that is open to buying. You don't wanna spend years cultivating this list and then sell them and have them be up in arms because they can't believe that you're selling them and trying to make a living with all of the helpful information you're providing. That happens all the time. So you need to continue to sprinkle little things in there to let you know the people on your list know that you do have something to sell and that eventually you will be you know from time to time offering that to them. So that way when it does come they're probably more excited than pissed off and that's kind of what you're looking for. Okay so finally the last thing I want to say is if you're just starting out with a blog or a niche site and you know that you want to build a membership site or you want to build a digital product of some sort and you want to sell it make sure you have an audience before you create it. Um, you could sink dozens of hours into creating this, but if you don't have traffic, if you don't have people visiting your website, if you don't have people on your email list, it's not gonna mean anything because there's not gonna be anybody there to buy it. So build the audience first, build your audience, build your traffic, create your content so that people can find you via search. Um, that's not to say you can't create a course and spend money on advertisements, but I'll be honest, it's really difficult to come up with a course and come up with uh, a funnel that uses Facebook ads or YouTube ads or Google ads and actually converts people into buyers. And unless you're an expert at that, that's not a good way to get started. If you do that, the chances are you're gonna lose quite a bit of money and it's much more difficult to do that because you haven't built trust with the people you're running ads to. So if you're just getting started, table the idea of starting a product for the next six to 12 months, really focus on putting out good content, building your email list, building your traffic. And when the time does come, for you to sell to your audience and provide them with a premium service, they're gonna be much more excited to support you and give you money for it. So just something to keep in mind. And with that, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of uh, Mount Hood and Timberland Lodge. I know I had a blast going there. It felt good to get out of the city. I'm not gonna lie. And we got new videos every Monday and Thursday. So if you're looking to build an online business that's gonna give you the freedom and the flexibility to spend more time doing the stuff you love in life, well, that's what we do. Go to locationrebel.com slash YT. Sign up for our free six-day course. We'll get you going in no time. And uh, I can't wait to see you on the next video. So have a fantastic rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Peace.